Donald Trump, the first out-to-lunch, senseless, thick-headed, moronic, witless president ever elected to office. But don't take my word for it. We'll talk about that next on All Things Beer and Bacon. Oh my God, what in the hell were we thinking when we elected this idiot to office? The man has a series of problems and is most likely unfit to run a popsicle stand, let alone be the leader of the free world. Have you heard him talk? His speeches ramble and rave like a lunatic. If that no longer qualifies as alarming, then we're in for some serious trouble. It can be staggering how incoherent this guy is. Here is a word-for-word -word transcript of a speech where he talked about the Iran nuclear deal. You look at the nuclear deal, the thing that really bothers me, it would have been so easy and it's not as important as these lives are. Nuclear is so powerful. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago, the power, and that was 35 years ago. He would explain the power of what's going to happen and he was right, who would have thought? But when you look at what's going on with the four prisoners, now it used to be three, now it's four, but when it was three, and even now, I would have said, it's all in the messenger. Fellas, and it is fellas, because you know, they don't. They haven't figured that the women are smarter right now than the men, so you know, it's going to take them about another 100 150 years, but the Persians are great negotiators, the Iranians are great negotiators, so, and they, they just killed, they just killed us. What the, bitch, what the fuck was, what the fuck was that? I know, right? That was not a functional use of the English language. That was a Dr. Seuss story on crack. Trump's actual speech patterns sound like when you write a really long text message using only the predictive text that your smartphone suggests for you. Seriously. Here's what happened when we wrote a text message starting with the words, the nuclear, on a smartphone. The nuclear test program was not opposed by the other person who knows what they want and then the delay is not being done by any other country and that is not the only way to make sure the world can do more things and things like that and gentlemen and then the other people who have been told to leave them alone with their children who are also very sad. Sound familiar? It makes as much, if not more sense, than Donald Trump's ramblings and only suggests that a smartphone would be an equal substitute for the current president of the United States. The man has no spine. He will make outlandish accusations, often without proof, and when asked about it, he'll try to twist his way out or deny he even said it. Who cares? I didn't say that. No, I didn't. You better read it again. In March of 2017, Trump tweeted this. How low has President Obama gone to tap? Tap, I love it. My phone's during a very sacred election process. Not an ounce of evidence has ever been produced. Here's what happened when he was asked about it. Well, you saw what happened with surveillance, and I think that was inappropriate. What does that mean, sir? Uh, you can figure that out yourself. Well, I, the reason I asked is you said he, you called him sick and bad. Look, you can figure it out yourself. He was very nice to me with words, but and when I was with him, but after that, there has been no relationship. But you stand by that claim about him? I don't stand by anything. I just, uh, you can take it the way you want. Behind the safety of the internet, Trump claims Obama committed an extremely serious crime. But in person, Trump backs away, first saying that his predecessor was very nice to me with words, and then, I don't stand by anything. I think he means, you caught me with my pants down, but I'm never going to admit it. And watch this. That interview kept going and gave Trump the opportunity to set the fake news media straight, but he refused. Here's what happened. I just wanted to find out, though, you're, you're the president of the United States. You said he was sick and bad because he had you tapped you. You can take any way. You can take it any way you want. But I'm asking you because you don't want it you to be fake news. I want to hear it from President Trump. Me. You don't have to ask me. Why not? Because I have my own opinions. You can have your own opinions. But I want to know your opinions. You're the president of the United okay. States. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Going back to your desk and pretending to read? Everyone knows you get your information from watching TV, and you never read anything. You never, ever do this. Why would you pretend to do this now? Grow a pair already. Donald Trump also shows signs that he simply is not all there. You don't have to be a doctor to see something is very, very wrong. With Alzheimer's, as language skills begin to deteriorate, we see two types of telltale speech disorders. One is choosing incorrect words. Here he is, 
struggling to find the word origins. And I hope that this investigation now, which is finished, it's totally finished, no collusion, no obstruction. I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation, the beginnings of that investigation. The Mueller report, I wish, covered the oranges, how it started. Or here, when he tries to talk about our children's future. They work two jobs and sometimes three jobs. They sacrifice every day for the furniture and future of their children. Trump shows frequent mental lapses, such as walking into the wrong room, forgetting where he is and what he's supposed to be doing, and even walking off the steps of Air Force One and wandering away from the presidential limo. Take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, has returned. He's walking down the stairs, wearing his classic signature red tie. He's about to enter into the presidential limousine. All right, oh, Mr. Trump, Mr. President, Mr. President, it, it's back here. Mr. President, Mr. President, please. Mr. President, yeah, yes. Yes, sir, right over here. It's this, this, it's this right here, right here, sir. Yes, sir. The car with the flags on it. The big black car here at the bottom of the stairs with the presidential seal on the door. Climb right on in the back here, sir. Yeah, watch your head. Watch your head. Here, let me get the door for, let me get the door for Melania here. Yes, ma'am. Right on in here. Right on in here. I don't know who you are, sir, but I guess, okay, you're welcome too. All right, Melania, please, uh, take, take the president's sippy cup and make sure he's buckled in nice and tight. Nice and tight. We don't want anybody working loose here. Is he buckled in? Are we ready to go? Okay, is he buckled in? Check. Okay, give him back his sippy cup. Give him back his... Yes, sir, there you are. There you are, good boy. Okay, let's go. It sure seems that Trump is suffering a dramatic mental decline from the quick-thinking apprentice host to a lonely, befuddled president who rattles around in the White House with rage and confusion. Here he is talking about how his father was born in Germany. My father is German, right? Was German. And uh, born in a, a very wonderful place in Germany. And so I have a great feeling for Germany. My father's from Germany. Uh, both of my parents are from the EU. Don't forget, both of my parents were born in EU sectors, okay? I mean, my mother was Scotland, my father was Germany. His father was born in the Bronx of New York, not in Germany. Why would he think that if he was in complete control of his faculties? Ladies and gentlemen, when your parents get too old to drive, you take the car keys away before somebody gets hurt. By electing Trump, Americans gave a man in mental decline the keys to the world's biggest arsenal. This may not end too well. Donald thinks his shit don't stink. Really rich. I actually think I have the best temperament. People love me. And you know what? I've been very successful. Everybody loves me. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. He thinks he's one of the most popular men in history, and the facts just don't back that up. Let's take a look at the election in 2016 for starters. More Americans voted for Hillary Clinton than any other losing presidential candidate in U.S. history. In doing so, Donald Trump became only the fifth person in U.S. history to become president while losing the nationwide popular vote, and this is a real sore subject with him. Sorry, Donald, but it's true. Donald also likes to boast about the size of his crowds at his rallies. Trump says his campaign received 120,000 requests to attend the kickoff rally in Orlando. Trump tweeted there would be big screen TVs and food trucks outside the arena to accommodate all his fans. Meanwhile, the official tally of the crowd was 19,792, so he was only off by about 100,000 people, with only a few dozen people choosing to watch from outside. If we have about uh, three or four empty seats, the fake news will say headlines. He didn't fill up the arena, you know. Not an empty seat in the house. <laughs> by the way, that is a lot of fake news back there. That's all. At Trump's own inauguration in 2016, 
He himself estimated the crowd to be 1.5 million people. The official estimate was as low as 250,000, or one-sixth of the number that he came up with. Take a look at this side-by-side -side image of Obama's and Trump's inaugurations. It seems clear that Trump drew significant fewer people than Obama did eight years ago, and Obama's crowd has been estimated to be around 1.8 million. So if Trump's estimate of 1.5 million probably seems to be unlikely. Also, the president was way off about a rally in Houston, claiming that 50,000 supporters walked from outside the arena. Houston police chief Art Acevedo says there were only around 3,000 people. One really shitty thing about bragging on, on the size of his crowds is his timing. As a few hundred onlookers watched at a speech made in Corpus Christi after Hurricane Harvey devastated parts of Texas, Trump began to talk about what really matters during a natural disaster, crowd size. He actually exclaimed, what a crowd, what a turnout. Because if there's one thing that truly matters to the millions of suffering people in the wake of a devastating storm, it's the amount of roadside gawkers who come to hear a guy shout into a microphone in front of some trucks. There was no mention of the dead, the dying, or homeless, and no expression of sympathy for them. What an asshole. His recent attack on the city of Baltimore only shows why his popularity is so low. He described the city as a disgusting, rat and rodent infested mess. Those people are living in hell in Baltimore. They're largely African American. You have a large African American population, and they really appreciate what I'm doing, and they've let me know it. They really appreciate it. You know, to say that we don't want to live here, no human being would want to live here, that's not true. We are human. Here, your home represented or commented about in such a disparaging way from the leader of the American society, which we're supposed to be patriotic to, is disturbing. At the very least, if you have a view that's that negative, perhaps find a better way to deliver it, or as my mom used to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. This is the man that tells us to love it or leave it, yet he has now attacked more cities than Godzilla. Maybe he should take his own advice and go back to Germany. Did these remarks make him more popular? The Baltimore Sun recently published an editorial in their newspaper after his attack. Here's an excerpt from it. Finally, while we would not sink to name-calling in the Trumpian manner, we would tell the most dishonest man to ever occupy the Oval Office, the mocker of war heroes, the gleeful grabber of women's private parts, the serial bankruptor of businesses, the useful idiot of Vladimir Putin, and the guy who insisted there are good people on murderous neo-Nazis that he's still not fooling most Americans into believing that he's even slightly competent in his current post or that he possesses a scintilla of integrity. Better to have some vermin living in your neighborhood than to be one. This country was built on the backs of those who came from somewhere else, those who look different, and those who disagree. To stand back and allow our leaders to suppress any of these things reeks of cowardice. It's the complete opposite of principled leadership. It's time for all of us to decide where we will draw the line. Mine has already been crossed. If we miss anything, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Thanks for watching All Things Beer and Bacon.